Talking today to Nigel Holmes, who is co-author with Stephen Abbott of Nano Coatings Principles and Practice. Perhaps you could start by explaining what nanotechnology is and how it works. Uh, quite simply, nanotechnology is the utilisation of very small particles. Uh, when we are saying very small particles, we are talking a size which can be typically smaller than the wavelength of light. Now the very interesting feature of these materials is that when you reduce the particle size of what's it say, gold for instance, uh, you get a reduction in the melting point from over a thousand degrees centigrade to down to about 700 degrees centigrade and this is purely due to the physics. That's just a specific example. With, nanote with nanoparticles you can play very very interesting games with optics, with hydrodynamics and possibly in the area of medical applications. Nanoparticles are the actual driving force for a great deal of potential new technology. And what are the sort of things that have been promised by nanotechnology? Um, there have been many, many promises over the years for nanotechnology because it is uh, actually not a, not a new science, in fact. Uh, many, many medieval stained glass windows would sort of actually employ nano gold in their, uh, in the, in their, in their construction. Um, but to sort of come back to the present day, um, there have sort of been many promises for the actual sort of production of, of, of elect in electronics using sort of graphene and carbon nanotubes, and also the improve significant improvement in the abrasion resistance of plastic materials. Most most plastics, in fact, of course, was it damaged very very easily. But with the application of nanoparticle coatings, then you can actually improve the wear and tear on these materials, making them much much longer lasting. And you've got entirely new materials like graphene, which have. Uh people have told us has had enormous promise. Indeed, yes, indeed. In fact, actually, sort of, if you, if you, if you like, graphene is what it is simply, sim, sim, simply a, a modified form of graphite. This is a gross simplification, mm. but the original way to produce graphene was actually to put a bit of sticky tape on a slab of graphite and pull away the, uh, and pull away the top layer. And this is essentially how graphene was, uh, was actually uh, created, was actually sort of first discovered. Uh, to step back a little bit, um, if we sort of think back maybe 10 years, there was an, an awful lot of talk about carbon nanotubes. In fact, carbon nanotubes are simply rolled up pieces of graphene. Right, so they're both, they're both in the same area. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And what would the practical applications of either graphene or carbon nanotubes be? In terms of, uh, in terms of uh, applications, mainly in the areas of electronics, uh, as I say, what's it, orga organic conductors, uh, many sort of uh, a typical sort of, uh, sort of conductive film that is used these days in uh, very, very widely comprises a sort of uh, a material called indium tin oxide, mm. um, which is very, very good, but is extremely expensive and has certain physical physical problems. Um, it, it may well be possible to actually replace indium tin oxide with coatings comprising graphene or indeed carbon nanotubes. And these coatings are used in in what way that uh, somebody a person in the street would, would see them. Um, well, let's uh, step aside, actually, to a sort of a material that is, uh, that is actually used today, a, nano, a, nano, a, nano, a nanomaterial that is actually used today. It is possible to produce silicon dioxide on a nanoparticle scale. Nano silicon dioxide is simply sand. But, mm. uh, but, uh, but this material can actually be formulated into an organic coating applied to a plastic film and then actually sort of used for your mobile if you're a mobile phone your computer mm. screen to generate what's a tremendous abrasion resistance in mm. fact so in fact the, the i won't say the the material becomes unscratchable because if you try mm. hard enough you can scratch anything but it improves the scratch resistance immensely mm. and Coming back to the key question, so what are the products we're likely to see developed over the next three to five years? Three to five years, I, I have to put my sort of, uh, sort of my pessimistic hat on here and say that I don't foresee significant 
um, advances in the what's it in the in the actual sort of the industrialization of graphene to actually see what it's sort of uh, organic electronics built on these materials. Mm. What I do expect to see is the uptake of uh, perhaps sort of more, rather more sort of mundane materials like silicon dioxide uh, in to actually improve abrasion resistance mm. of sur of surfaces and possibly materials such as zinc oxide to actually sort of improve the UV resistance of, uh, of materials. And, well, I say, given the fact that... Uh, and improving the UV resistance would mean that things like paints lasted longer than sunshine. And... Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. yes. You wouldn't find, as I say, you wouldn't find things peeling off and discolouring. Yes, <laughs> yeah. and, and ship's hulls. And... Fair to say, these are, these, are, these are all accessible areas. These are yeah. all accessible areas. But the time scale for things beyond that, like the biomedicines and the graphene, this is... this is this is um, this is rather more difficult to say because, of course, these, as we alluded to earlier, these materials are not cheap. They yes. are not cheap at all. So there so must any... there must be a good economic case to actually sort of drive the actual technical case. Also, the yes. two go hand in hand. Yeah. So uh, if if it is expensive, there then has to either be lots and lots of people using it at exactly a, at a low there, cost there, 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 there must be the economics of scale or there yeah. must be was it a technological breakthrough to actually make the make the material less expensive and do the economics of scale work in terms of producing the nanoparticles themselves in other words if you're doing a very short runs is it much more expensive than generally doing? yes yeah. yes general general gen, gen, generally speaking sort of uh, the machines that you would envisage to produce these materials you don't want to switch them on for half an hour you probably want mm. them running for a week That's yes that. okay and so if you had to put your money on the long-term product that will come through. What mm. do you think will come through in 10, 15 years' time? I think on that particular time scale, then I could definitely foresee the sort of, uh, what's it, a revolution in the, uh, in the organic electronics area. Certainly, certainly, I think on that time scale, I would hope to be seeing what's it, a, a sort of uh, widespread use of graphene in organic electronics. Nigel, thanks for talking to me today. Thank you very much indeed.